And it's a thrill to have Lulu Guinness here because, as Courtney just mentioned, this year marks her 25th anniversary. That's 25 years. <laughs> and that's 25 years of going from one little bag to a global brand. So I think how I'd like to kick off, Lulu, is by asking you, 25 years have gone by. How do you still maintain the excitement? Well, I think that's a very good question. Um, and it slightly depends on which day of the week you ask me these questions. <laughs> Today's Tuesday. I'm having a good, or Wednesday. I'm having a good day today. <laughs> I'm, yeah, it's Wednesday, isn't it? I'm having a good day. Hmm. Um, I think how I keep my excitement going is I think the key to why people go into fashion or love fashion is because our personalities are that, that we love change. We want constant change. We get bored very quickly. And so for me, what is new is what's exciting. And that's why I have this box. Ah, oh, the black box. Like my magic, it's as if it's a magic trick. This is press day in a box. So um, at the same time around London, we delivered 60, I think, of these. And so basically you open it up, and inside is uh, a photograph from the campaign. If, I don't know, can you see that over there? I'm not usually allowed to handle it. <laughs> um, and then to have a bit of humor, we've given you, uh, the idea is that we're gonna watch a movie of the press day on this tablet. To add a bit of humor, we gave you some popcorn. Very good popcorn, I can tell you. <laughs> Charming Emily, proving that ladylike can be practical. It's a good point to actually reflect now. If we look right back from something like this, a mm -hmm. virtual press day, yeah. latest technology, a video, to that day 25 years ago when you designed your first bag. If that wasn't your intention to go into fashion, how did it all sort of it end up like that? It did, literally. I mean, I think, I don't know when people say to you, I didn't, I, and I speak to a lot of uh, art colleges, I did not study fashion at St. Martin's or anything, and I wish I had. It's just not how my life worked out. I did graphic design for a year, and all through my childhood, I was always like designing posters and things. I love graphics, and I think really that um, handbags almost, and, but I do like shape as mm. well. So I think handbags almost became like a vehicle for me to um, put my words, you know, sayings, my pat, my uh, prints, whatever it was, whatever really I was thinking. Or well, your personality. Yeah, my personality. It was a way of, of, of putting it on the bags. Okay. Um, so the Debenhams thing, this was like a kind of adjunct to your main line. Yeah, it was like a big a eye of, opener for me. A kind of um, di um, diffusion line, if you like. High yeah, street. yeah, I was uh, able to have satin evening bags for 19.99. I mean, it was fantastic. Whereas my bags sort of cost 300 pounds. Yeah. And I love that thing that we could do this. But my buyers just made me choose. They were furious. And they said, if you want to continue being in, in Selfridges or wherever it was, Brown Thomas, I think, in Dublin, you know, you can't be with Debenhams because there wasn't the understanding. And with America, I think, in a way, you got your own back on the people who wouldn't let you continue with Debenhams because you launched that division yeah, line. Yeah, well that's much, much later. That's right. only recently I've done that. I've been through an awful lot of licensing in, in my life and good and bad. And I think it's, for designers, it's a very hard thing, licensing, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. And I think there's good licenses and bad licenses. And I've, l I've done everything wrong once in each country. And I just hope I would say, the office, I hope I don't do it twice because I should have learnt by now that you, you know, how you have to behave. But licensing can be brilliant. Now it's all about the H and M collaboration, whatever yes. it's about. Or Henry I mean, Holland and Topshop. Or but I mean, now if you're a designer and you don't have uh, collaborations with High Street, yeah. you're not happening. You yeah. know. So I did bow out, and Jasper Conran stayed in. And, so did um, John Rocher and yeah, Debbie and Rocher. a lot of them are still there. And as I say to you, they all have a house in the south of France, and I don't. And I don't know if I and I still I'm not quite sure 
The, the jury's still out, depending what day of the week it is. I'm with, no, of course I made the right decision. <laughs> Let's look at your own designs, though, for a minute, because I'm intrigued. Yeah. The, I know the lipstick. I mean, I, I've got like 300 bags in my office. So, I mean, I just sort of thought I bought like a couple of little ones to illustrate a point. So this was obviously the first iconic bag I did, at least. And then for a very long time now, luckily, lips. these lips just don't seem to go away. I've, these have been my absolute trademark now for quite a few years and you never get people never get bored of the red lip i don't get bored of it but someone very wise <laughs> said to me lulu just get your signature and stay there so that your customer <laughs> isn't confused that people know when they want something like that or what your signature is yeah. you are the person to come to right. and it was and it stuck with me that actually having this very strong identity isn't boring because when you're young you sort of think oh, but I've got to be like totally original every season and start from reinvent the wheel every season otherwise right. people will think I don't have ideas or you know but I've learned you are allowed to keep your signature right. okay. well, thank you, thank you. Thank you,